Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In the Holy Quran, it is said, you are the best people raised for the good of mankind. You enjoin what is right and forbid what is wrong and believe in Allah. Chapter 3, verse 111. My dear brothers and sisters, respected Amir Sahib, respected Chairman Sahib, and gracious guests, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. May the peace and blessings of God be upon you all. In the verse I have recited, there is an important claim. You are the best people raised for the good of mankind. It is a simple yet powerful idea. You might say this is Islam's mission statement. Muslims' mission statement. It conveys upon us the opportunity to earn reward in the sight of God as being the best people. But it is not automatic. To earn this special reward, we must complete two requirements. First, we must believe in God. And second, we must demonstrate good actions that benefit mankind. In the minutes to follow, I wish to outline how Islam founded upon the principle that we serve humanity as a fundamental form of divine worship requires our personal sacrifice. We must work for the betterment of our neighbors, our countrymen, and the good of all mankind. Let us begin to understand how the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, approached service to mankind. In one tradition, he said, give regular charity out of your property, for truly it is a purifier. And be kind to the relatives and acknowledge the rights of the poor and neighbors and those who seek your help. In another, he, em he emphasized non-monetary forms of charity. The doors of goodness are many, enjoining good, forbidding evil, removing obstacles from the road, listening for the dead, hurrying to one in sorrow who is asking for help, and supporting the feeble with the strength of one's arm. All of these are charity prescribed for you. He also said, your smile for your brother is charity. I love that, smiling is charity. About caring for orphans, the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, once said, myself and the caretaker of an orphan will be like this in paradise, and he held his two fingers together. Beyond individuals carrying out charity, Islam also ushered in groundbreaking reforms to Arabia at that time. These reforms benefited the masses in many ways. For example, the advocacy for women's education and inheritance was new. New financial models for charity, making it obligatory to give alms for the poor and needy. Calling for racial equality and governance with absolute justice. These are but a few examples of what the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, prepared as he launched Islam's new code of conduct for mankind. Unfortunately, over time, Muslims would eventually neglect Islam's model. In a well-known saying foreseeing the future where Muslims would fail to discharge these duties, the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said there will come a time upon the people when nothing will remain of Islam except its name and nothing will remain of the Quran except its script. Their mosques will be splendidly furnished, but destitute of guidance. Their scholars will be the worst people under the sky. Strife will emerge from them and return to them. Something needed to be done to protect and rekindle true Islam. 
that something would be the advent of a promised Messiah. In the later days, this Messiah would come and help mankind reinvigorate the original and true teachings of Islam. The Ahmadiyya Muslim community was established in 1889 by Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, peace be upon him, the promised Messiah. Reflecting like a perfect mirror on the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, the promised Messiah taught his followers the teachings of the Holy Quran can be divided into two major categories. The first being unity of God, love and obedience to him. The second is to treat kindly your brothers and fellow beings, be kind and merciful to humanity, always work for the good of mankind. One incident that I wish to relate is when the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, encountered a group of women and sickly children from the countryside asking for medicine from him. As this crowd grew larger and larger, and although the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, had an important and urgent article to write that day, he devoted three hours to dispensing different Western medicines to the needy. His companions said to him, this is troublesome and wastes much of your time. Whereupon the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, replied most cheerfully and calmly, saying, this too is sacred work. These are poor people and there is no dispensary nearby. A Muslim should not be neglectful or indifferent in this matter. Before the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, passed away in 1908, he said in his will, it is the promise of God that he will cause the Jamaat, meaning the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, to flourish. So it is expected that abundance of funds will be forthcoming for the propagation of Islam. These funds shall also be used to help such orphans, poor, and needy and new converts as do not have sufficient means for livelihood. However, the promised Messiah also warned us. Rather, I am worried that after I am gone, those who will be entrusted these funds may not, seeing their abundance, stumble and fall in love with the world. So I pray that such honest people may always be found and the Jamaat will be with these people to do God's work for the good of God's blessings alone. An important warning for us all to be aware of. Our service to humanity is for our protection against materialism. I'll say that again. Our service to humanity is for our own protection against materialism. When we humble ourselves by understanding the conditions of others around us, we find greater value in serving our fellow human beings in lieu of worldly pursuits. When the promised Messiah passed away in 1908, the Ahmadiyya Muslim community leaders elected his successor to become the next in line to hold the title of Khalifa, an office that would have divine support as promised to the community by God. I wish to take a few moments now to share how the community progressed under each of the five successors since the time of the promised Messiah, and specifically how they continue to inculcate Islam's model that to earn divine favor, we must be the best in service to mankind. The first of these successors, Hazrat Hakim Nuruddin, may Allah be pleased with him, was was very well versed in medicine. He was a royal physician to the Maharaja for many years. His methods of diagnosis, fortified by a strong faith and a perfect reliance upon God, became known widely across South Asia. People from far and wide sought his services. Throughout his life, he never demanded a fee. He did not discriminate between his patients. Every one of them received his full attention. The poor and indig indignant were the objects of his special care. Bearing these core set of skills and Islam's 
service values would lead to the establish establishment of the community's first hospital, the Noor Hospital in Kadian, India, still in operation today, which was inaugurated in 1917. The second successor, Hazrat Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmed, the promised son, may Allah be pleased with him, led the Ahmadiyya Muslim community for 52 years and is known for establishing virtually the entire organizational structure for the community, including the five auxiliaries. Improvement of its administration, formalizing the system of financial contributions, and directing the extensive missionary activity in what would expand the community to a global footprint, having missions today in nearly every country of the world. He compiled over 800 lectures and writings, with one in particular addressing how does Ahmadiyyat, the true Islam, propose to deal with the grave problem of socioeconomic inequality in the world? Imagine that, discussing this topic, that time frame, over 60 years ago. Simply put, he stated Islam's answer of service to mankind would be a globally engaged community of missionaries and volunteers seeking nothing but the pleasure of God in return for their charity and service. We see examples in this in our many missions and missionaries today established in 212 countries and territories around the world. When we look closely at the daily work of these dedicated individuals, we see missionaries acting as educators and social workers committed to the welfare of the communities that they develop into their own. They invest person by person to lift people up, create followers of the Jamaat who are committed to serving others. The third successor, Hazrat Mirza Nasser Ahmed, may Allah have mercy on him, was elected in 1965. And he founded the Nusrat Jahan scheme soon after completing his tour of seven African countries. The scheme was named after the blessed wife of the promised Messiah. The, the funds collected under the Fuzli Umar Foundation scheme were used to organize a large number of teachers, medical personnel, and equipment dedicated to 17 medical centers and 15 schools in West Africa, purely for the service of humanity without any profit motive. A man of eloquence, he once quoted a saying, love for all, hatred for none, a slogan we use to spread our message to this day. The fourth successor, Hazrat Mirza Tahir Ahmed, may Allah have mercy on him, was elected in 1982 and would relocate the global headquarters of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community in 1984 to London, having a profound impact on the globalization and emigration of Ahmadis to all corners of the world. In 1994, Hazrat Mirza Tahir Ahmed launched a global satellite feed called Muslim Television Ahmadiyya as a 24-7 free-to-air TV channel focused on spreading our good works and peaceful teachings to millions of Muslims globally. In the same year, he launched a nonprofit organization called Humanity First to focus on disaster relief and sustainable human development initiatives around the world. Today, Humanity First is registered in 53 countries across six continents. This brings us to present day. Under the guidance and leadership of the fifth successor of the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmed, may Allah strengthen his hand the Ahmadiyya Muslim community today serves mankind in over 212 countries and territories, where members of the community have helped over 170,000 people involved in natural disasters spanning 20 countries, fed over 400,000 people with food packs and farming resources across 27 countries, educated and built schools for over 18,000 children in countries struggling to provide the basics, served over 3.9 million people with water well installations and another 50,000 patients with health care services in 15 countries. 
This includes 40 permanent clinics and hospitals that the community has built. All of the data that I just announced happened in the span of just one year. So that kind of model repeats itself year over year, and it grows. One such hospital that was completed in October of 2018 was the Nasser Hospital, inaugurated by His Holiness Mirza Masrur Ahmed, may Allah be pleased with him, near Guatemala City. During his inaugural address, His Holiness said, this hospital has been built with purely one intention, and that is, quite simply, to serve humanity by providing high-quality health care to the masses. His Holiness continued on to say, we seek no praise and no reward for our humanitarian efforts because we are merely doing what our religion has taught us to do. I had the distinct fortune to be there for this inauguration. And many people afterwards asked our community leaders, why would so many American doctors, volunteers, and students donate millions of dollars and thousands of hours of time to help Guatemalans they have never met and they have no relationship to. In a Friday sermon, His Holiness Mirza Masrur Ahmed, may Allah strengthen his hand, summon, su summarize this point up by saying, why is every Ahmadi so zealous for serving humanity? The reason is the beautiful teachings of Islam that had been forgotten that if we seek the pleasure of Allah, the Almighty, we should treat humanity with beneficence and take care of its needs. This is also how we will be rewarded with the nearness of Allah, the Almighty. The promised Messiah, peace be upon him, has made this teaching a fundamental condition in his 10 conditions of bath, which are our pledge to join this community. The ninth condition reads that he, she shall keep himself or herself occupied in the service of God's creatures for, the sake, for God's sake only, and shall endeavor to benefit mankind to the best of his or her God-given abilities and powers. After establishing a bond with God, you should utilize all your powers and means for the sympathy and welfare of humanity. I'd like to now mention some words of significance from the very birth of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, peace be upon him, was directed by divine revelation to lay the foundation of a community of his followers by inviting them to a covenant of spiritual allegiance to him. In March of 1889, the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, issued a leaflet in which he stated, and these words are for you, the community of Amadi Muslims. God desires to found a community of the faithful to manifest his glory and power. He will make the community grow and prosper, to establish the love of God, righteousness, purity, piety, peace, and goodwill among men. This shall be a group of persons devoted to God, he shall strengthen them with his own spirit and bless them and purify them. He shall multiply them exceedingly as he has promised. Thousands of truthful people shall join his ranks. He shall himself look after them and make the community grow so much so that the numbers and progress shall amaze the world. The community <clears throat> shall be a lighthouse so high as to illumine the four corners of the world. The members thereof shall serve as models of Islamic blessings. My true followers shall excel every other people. There shall always rise among them till the day of judgment personages who will be chosen ones of God in every respect. So has Almighty decreed. So does, he does as he wills. The first formal initiation took place on March 23, 1889, and thus the Ahmadiyya Muslim community was born. One of the favorite sayings of the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, which he also used in his poetry and other writings, was this. My desire, my wish, my objective is serving humanity. 
It is my work, my faith, my inspiration, and my way. My dear brothers and sisters, let this be a reminder of the legacy that we have inherited. From the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, the promised Messiah, peace be upon him, and each of the five successors, all upholding the claim from the Quran set out at the beginning of this speech. You are the best people raised for the good of mankind. You enjoin what is right and forbid what is wrong and believe in Allah. Before I end, I want to take a moment with you and reflect on a couple of statistics. If you look at the people that are occupying this hall and you imagine that we represent humanity, and then you look around you and you select 10 people that you can see, and then imagine that eight of these 10 people are living on less than $10 a day. That is the statistic from the World Bank. One of those eight people happens to be living on less than $1.25 a day, a condition known as severe poverty. One of these people around you represents the children of the world, and there are more than one billion children that are living in poverty. We have a lot to do. If you're not involved, get involved. If you are already involved, get more of your fellow Amity brothers and sisters involved. My dear brothers and sisters, serving humanity is our way. It is the best path to attaining the pleasure of God. May God enable us all to fulfill this promise and become worthy of his special favors. Amen. Jazakum.